Abhijit ji, I want to uh, again go back to China. And we have seen 2020 has been in many ways uh, a year where uh, Beijing showed us its, you know, ugliest side. Uh, all sorts of things, right? We've seen that what, what's happened uh, at the LAC, we've seen their wolf warrior diplomacy, the whole cover up around uh, COVID-19, uh, intimidation of Australia, and I think a whole bunch of other countries. Uh, and of course, internally and, uh, you know, in Hong Kong, uh, they've sort of cracked down on dissent like uh, never before. Uh, so I want to understand why has China become so emboldened? Uh, why does it feel that it can get away with anything? Um, so we need to understand what we're seeing is not China emboldened. What we're seeing is China panicking. Right. Um, and if you remember, even over the last, I think it was in the festival of Bharat about two years back, I said that India's great uh, misfortune is that our leadership right now are clueless. But India's great strategic opportunity is the fact that China's leadership is even more clueless than India's leadership. Uh, because Xi Jinping being a very stupid man is the greatest gift China has ever given us. I'll tell you why. When people like Deng Xiaofeng and uh, who, even up to Hu Jintao, but including Jiang Zemin especially, they were very careful that, you know, till China reaches paramountcy, they should never attempt to change the status quo. They should never challenge uh, global consensus so openly. I think Xi Jinping has, uh, you know, counted his chickens before they hatched, and he's made it a lot more aggressive. Now, understand why was this last year? China's aggression became particularly bad after COVID started up, and that is because of the kind of criticism that was being leveled at China. It was a panic reaction, and this shows you the danger of Xi Jinping that for something like this, he starts panicking and he acts super aggressively instead of backing down. Uh, it, it shows you the dangers of having a madman in power. Uh, internally, if you look at it, he has shut down all internal, and you know, there was dissent. I, I think Deng Xiaopang saw to it that there was some kind of internal dissent where you could dissent within, uh, within the party. It, it shouldn't get out, but within the party, you could have different opinions and everything would be carefully measured and so on and so forth. Uh, Xi Jinping has destroyed that. You can't have a different opinion from him anymore. Um, so he engages in really stupid ventures like CPEC or OBOR, call it whatever you want, uh, which are, we all know they're financially unviable. They're, uh, I've not, I'm yet to see a cost benefit analysis of this uh, joke that is OBOR. And he's basically going to be, Xi Jinping is going to be like Brezhnev. Brezhnev and Khrushchev set the, uh, uh, the seed for the collapse of the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union didn't collapse in their lifetime. It collapsed about 20, 30 years after they died. Uh, you're going to see the same thing with Xi Jinping. Uh, Xi Jinping is laying the seeds for, of the collapse of China, but it's not going to happen in his lifetime. It's going to happen after that. Uh, because he is making the same mistake of overextension of bad fiscal policy, unsustainable fiscal policy, spending money that they think they have, which can evaporate very, very quickly uh, on white elephants, essentially. So it, Xi Jinping is doing everything that the Communist Party of China told itself it would not do, which is do a USSR. And I think um, even on the uh, commercial, I mean, business front, we've seen what um, what's happening to Jack Ma and his uh, company. And I know uh, would, that would also not bode very well for the things that have actually helped China to get where it is. I mean, in terms of economic growth, in terms of innovation, uh, he's directly going against that. Do you think that will also sort of slow down some of, uh, you know, at, at least the economic progress that China has been having for the uh, last few decades? Uh, look, the economic progress has already uh, sort of plateaued, and I'll tell you why they're stuck in a middle income trap. Now. Uh, if you look at the huge increases in income you saw, uh, look how they've been stuck at that same sort of nine, ten thousand dollar mark for quite some time now. Right? Why is that happening? Because when you transition from a manufacturing economy into the information age, a manufacturing economy 
requires a very strong state because industrialization is one of the most disruptive processes, uh, anthropologically speaking. It's one of the most disruptive processes. Uh, when you transition to the information age, the state needs to take a back seat and the citizens take the foreground. The Chinese Communist Party isn't willing to do that. Remember the reason that countries like South Korea, Taiwan, uh, uh, they democratized wasn't because of the goodness of the heart. It's not like the Kuomintang suddenly decided, oh, you know, I've seen the light of uh, uh, Buddha, Loka, Teshwara, or Jesus, or whatever it is, and decided to democratize. No, it happened because that 80s to 90s was when you were transitioning from manufacturing into microchips and the digital economy and the information economy. And so they decided to democratize because it was what the economy required. China has not done that. They're basically going the same way that North Korea is going at the moment. The thing about North Korea was people forget North Korea had the second highest per capita income in Asia after Japan till 1979. Till 1979, North Korea was the success, South Korea was the failure. Right. So uh, China has sort of stalled its own growth. From now on, all the growth figures are prone to manipulation. They are all prone to sort of excess uh, spending of money because they, they're sitting on what, a three and a half, four trillion dollar reserve. Uh, but, you know, at some point, if you spend one point two, one point three trillion dollars or whatever they are on things like Obor, uh, that money isn't going to last very long. Uh, like they say, you know, the, uh, the grandfather makes the money, the father spends the money and the son loses the money. Uh, I think Xi Jinping is the, uh, uh, Xi Jinping, sorry, is the son that's going to lose the money or at least the beginning of the loss of money. Um, it's, it's not going to, but again, you need to have a lot of faith. Uh, this isn't going to happen in the next 10, 12 years. This is going to happen in the next 30, 40 years. So it's a long-term thing that you need to look out for. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.